Okay, we are recording. For some reason, I cannot figure out how to stream this live on the team page anymore. So if you have coaches on your team that usually watch it live in Ignite, I am so sorry. I don't know why I've been working on it. The app's not working. It just wants to stream to my profile and not to our group. Um, so if there are any coaches that you still want to get in on this training, send them the link, let them join us. They are in for a treat. I know a lot of you are here tonight because you heard Danny on the National Coach Wake Up Call and you know how incredible her energy is, how much value she adds. She'll probably share a little bit about her story, but she built this business and earned success club and showed up and did the work. And I don't, maybe like a year, year and a half ago, two years ago, she was one star, Danny. Was it like one star? And in less than a year, she went from one star to eight star diamond coach and incredible, like eight star, I think five star, like multiple CBCs going. She has a few CBCs. And I love that story because she'll share it better than I can, but I love it because it shows you that the consistency in this business pays off. And so, and I just think that's shows so much about who she is and the type of leader she is because so many people that I think four, five years in would say, I'm not where I want to be. And their negativity would have kept them stuck. It, they would have showed up differently. And she showed up with just as much energy, like this is possible. This is going to happen. And it did. And not only is she eight stars, she has five star diamond coaches and three stars and two stars, like all over her downline. Um, and so it's, it's been really cool to see how far she's come and what looks like a short time. It's one of those things that, you know, overnight success stories take years. <laughs> um, but Danny, let me see if I can find you again. I'm so excited. You're here to share with us tonight. Hi, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I have a presentation, so, um, hopefully I can share my screen, um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys tonight uh, about this leadership mindset. It's a presentation that I actually just did for my larger team. Um, I don't have a coach. The person who signed me up quit. And then the person that inherited me uh, actually doesn't work the business. And then the, her coach, by the time I was inherited was like kind of taking a break. She's back now, but obviously I, I've built such a, a big team that I don't really necessarily need a, a, a coach. Um, I don't really need her to mentor me. So um, I've kind of built the majority of this business completely on my own, which I've made a lot of mistakes. So I try to share all my mistakes with my team so that they don't make those same mistakes and that they can hopefully grow faster. So I personally have been working on my own mindset for um, about a year now. Last year, I actually, in June or July, I got started with an Enneagram coach. And so her, it's like life coaching, but specifically on the Enneagram and how you can use that to, um, you know, better learn about yourself and learn about others. And so I did that for about six months and then we took a break and I started with a life coach in December and I did about 12 weeks with her. And then I started with Christy. So Christy is actually my life coach. Um, and it's just been amazing and how lucky you guys get her uh, all the time. So I'm gonna share my screen and start my presentation because I know that's what you're here for, but you'll learn a little bit about me um, and just the mindset shifts that I have gone through in the past year since really starting with a coach. Um, you always hear like great coaches have coaches. So everybody needs a coach. Um, it might not be exactly like, a beach body coach, but maybe a coach in your life to help you. And you guys have such a great leader uh, as your coach. So even if she's not your personally sponsored coach, then you're still really lucky, lucky to have her. So, um, okay. So I am Danny Detra and I live in Portland, Oregon with my darling husband, John, and my daughter, Chloe. Uh, she's actually really sick today. And it is um, making me so sad because she's literally never sick and all of a sudden she has 101 um, fever, but 
uh, what a joy to be able to be a coach and not have to call in and worry about paid time off or, you know, losing my job because my daughter is sick. Like what a joy it is to be a coach. And it's just one of those days where I'm reminded of how grateful I am that even though my coach quit six years ago, when she noticed me and asked me five times to be a coach that I said, yes because my entire life has changed. And while that might seem like a very tiny thing, it's the biggest thing because it is literally the ultimate freedom to have to answer to nobody but yourself. And that was really my driving force once I got started in this business was freedom. And I know people say that, but a lot of people say that and still have an employee employer mindset where they're not they're not willing to be self-starters. They're willing to keep going when it gets tough because they don't have a clock to punch or they don't have someone looking over their shoulder making sure they get their work done. Um, but me, while money is really my ultimate motivator, freedom is, is what has gotten me out of bed every single day because I want to be where I want, when I want, with who I want, whenever I want. And working in a thankless job for nine years that ended in a two minute phone call of being fired and telling me I'm too negative and I don't work there, even though I literally ran the place, um, showed me that like, we are just, you know, we are, um, I can't think of the word, but basically people will drop you on a dime and get rid of you no matter how hard you work. And so, being able to be my own boss, knowing I can never be fired from Beachbody, right? And I can build this as big or as grand, as fast, as slow as I want um, is, is truly a, a dream come true. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm the founder of Team Boss Babes. I became a coach in February of 2015. I was working full time the first year that I was a coach. And then I lost my job literally January 8th, the next uh, 2016. So January 9th, I became a full-time coach with Beachbody and I had $61,000 in debt that my husband knew nothing about. So um, not only in that moment that I lost my job, did I have to tell him that I lost my job and we were at his company holiday party. So, you know, it was great timing, um, but I had to tell him about all this debt. And that was the biggest elephant that every single night I felt like I couldn't breathe because I had so much debt and I just did not know how I was going to get out of it. Even though I made great money, I spent it as fast as I made it and it just never seemed to be enough. Um, and so I am an eight-star diamond in my first business center, a five-star diamond in my second, a soon-to-be one-star in my third. We are in qualification. I was a 2019 and 2020 premier coach. We hit elite for the first time last year in 2021. I was a presenter on the national wake-up call, and my team is currently ranked number 90 in the company, and we've already achieved premiere for 2022, and so we are a few points shy of elite, so we will be an elite team for 2022 as well. So um, I've been on a lot of calls, and I've heard a lot of accolades, and sometimes you can sit there and you can think like, oh my gosh, that will never be me, or oh my gosh, good for you, or um, you, know, you could think a plethora of things, but what I want you to take away from this call today is that no matter what, whatever you dream possible for yourself with this business, it's possible as long as you never give up. Like nothing is unrealistic. Like when my coaches and I sit down to set goals and they're like, okay, well, what's a realistic timeline for Diamond? I'm like 24 hours is realistic, honestly, because someone has done that. So it's whatever you want is realistic. So if you're, you signed up today and you're like, okay, I want to be diamond. I want to wake up diamond next Thursday. You can absolutely do that, right? If you are just going diamond right now and you're like, I want to be elite coach by the end of the year, you can absolutely do that. As long as you're willing to put in the work and not let the negative thoughts that are going to come in because they will, no matter how positive you are, no matter how much you work on your mindset, you're a human. And those thoughts are going to come in because that is the way that our brain is wired. 
our brain is wired to protect us. So when something feels hard or scary or new, our brain sends out this signal of like, watch out, that could be, that could be death, right? Because a million years ago, leaving your house, a saber toothed tiger could kill you. It literally was life or death. Like every decision you made was life or death. Our brain really hasn't evolved a lot from then. So our brain doesn't know whether it's true or false, but it is wired to protect you. So the thoughts that you continually think over and over and over again are the thoughts that your brain are going to believe to be true. So when a negative thought comes in, I want you to get rid of the statement, like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I always thinking these negative thoughts? And just realize that you're human. That's why you're thinking those thoughts and that it's just your brain's way of trying to protect you. There's nothing wrong with you. Now, you get to choose the thoughts that you choose to believe. So you can sit there and say, it'll never happen for me. It's too fast. I can't work that hard. I can't achieve that. I can't do what she did. And, you know, a laundry list of other things you could tell yourself, or you could say she did it. Why not me? Somebody already paved the path for you and showed you that it's possible. So it's absolutely possible for you, no matter how you might feel about your business, whether your business is freaking thriving or in the toilet right now, a week in Beachbody can change your entire life. And I am proof of that. April 1st, 2020, I was a one-star diamond. I was a lifetime three-star, but currently one-star. Me being the star, me, Danny too, so literally had no diamonds except for my own second business center. And by April 23rd, I was in six-star qual. Six weeks later, we woke up a six-star team and had finished Elite for the first time after missing it the four years prior. So if I can go from missing Elite four years in a row to completing Elite in five months in the next year, anything is possible, anything. And that was the first month that I ever broke over $10,000. The highest month I'd ever had before that was around 8,600. And that was like a, whoa, like this is wild, like kind of thing, right? And I have not had a month under $10,000 since April, 2020. So please believe me that a week in Beachbody is a lifetime. It can change your whole life if you believe that. All right, so you are somebody worth celebrating and you are somebody worth going the extra mile for. Like, again, I got so many messages last year about what are you doing? Like, where are all these diamonds coming from? Like, tell me your secrets, what's going on? And at first it was like, oh, it's exciting. Everyone, like all the eyes are on me. Like they wanna know what I'm doing. And it was like, what I'm doing is what I have been doing the last five years. And it just all came together <laughs> very quickly and compounded very fast. I'm sure one of the first books you read as a coach was The Compound Effect. And I'm here to tell you it is absolutely freaking true. But it will only happen if you don't give up and you are consistent. Um, can someone mute Cindy? I can't mute her. Um, so it's not going to happen if you decide to work here and then take three weeks off and then have a kick-ass month and then decide that overwhelmed you and not work for three months. And all of these in and out coaches, all of these one foot in coaches, the compound effect is never going to become true for you. So for me, I showed up no matter what, no matter how bad I felt, no matter if I felt embarrassed that I wasn't making enough, no matter on the times I had chips on my shoulder thinking I should be further because I've been a coach this long, which is such a silly lie that we tell ourselves because time is irrelevant in this business because it took me five years to become a six-star diamond. And I just celebrated one of my own PS who just became a five-star in a year and a half. So time is irrelevant in this business. It matters what you do with the time that you have, not how much time you've been a coach. 
So again, I want to go back to anything you can dream of for your business is realistic. And then when you achieve something, and this part is really hard for me, I want you to celebrate like crazy, no matter how small it is. Whether it's you posted seven days in a row on social media, whether it's you drank your Shakeology for 30 days straight and you actually got through that whole bag before another bag showed up, whether you signed up one customer or 10 customers or one coach or 10 coaches, I want you to celebrate the things that are happening to you in this business. Because the fastest way to suck the joy is to feel like what you're doing isn't good enough. Because it is. Because if you are trying and you are getting results, and you are helping others do that same thing, then you are winning. And trust me, I am a type three on the Enneagram. Like I want, I want it all. Like beach body, like fucking build a statue of me, put it on a stage. Like I want all of that. I want Danny, like flashing lights as I walk across the stage in a gown with like a 30 foot train. Like I want those things. But at the end of the day, that's one night on a stage with Beachbody, but I have to live with myself and my family for the rest of my life. So I can't chase these shiny things, which can still be important to you because they're very important to me. I have to become the person that can validate myself by just telling myself that I'm good enough. And I don't have to prove anything to do that and neither do you. And you can validate yourself by keeping your word to yourself, by when you set an alarm, getting up when that alarm goes off. You can validate yourself by finishing your workout that you wanted to quit 40 times. You can validate yourself by putting a post on social media and say, I did my job today as a coach, I shared my journey and a million other ways, right? And yes, those outside validations feel incredible, but if that's what we're consistently chasing, it will never be good enough for you. And that's something I struggle with as well. Like, it's never enough for me. Like, okay, we hit eight star and five star last year. Like, what, what can we do now? Like, okay, that was, you know, six months ago. What can we do now? Like, we have to stop and celebrate what we've done or we forget why we're doing it. And then that's why we get burned out. So here's some of the reasons why I wanted to do a presentation on this topic. So again, type three on the Enneagram, like achieving is my jam. And for the longest time, my self-limiting belief was I can't help others find the success that I have. Why is it so easy for me to hit success club, right? Why is it so easy for me to bring in a coach when other people, you know, invite all the time and they never bring in coaches, right? I started telling myself this story and then oh what happened for the first five years I didn't have coaches hitting success club I didn't have coaches rank advancing I didn't have coaches who wanted to shoot for these big goals with me right like you put out a big goal on the team page and it's crickets and it's seen by 48 people and nobody responds so it's like I was perpetuating the thing that I was trying to avoid by continually telling myself these lies, right? So you might find yourself doing that. You might find yourself saying, oh, nobody wants to join me. But when that's the thought that you continually operate from, like nothing positive is going to come from that thought process, right? So again, you're totally human and it's totally okay that you have those thoughts. What's not okay is choosing to believe that it's true and then operating from that standpoint and then getting frustrated with the results that you're getting. So uh, one of the reasons I thought that is my very first diamond on the team, we were like peanut butter and jelly, literally texted all day, every single day. We hung out two to three times a week. We did everything together. Like she was my success partner. Like I thought we were going to be literally the next Lindsay Matway and Bonnie Angle. Like I was like, we're going straight to the top. It's you and me. Like we were that, you know, little emoji, the two little twin emojis with the bunny ears. I literally thought that was us. And then one day out of the blue, literally nothing happened. I got an email in the middle of the night from her telling me I'm the worst person in the world and I only care about myself and a lot of other really hurtful mean things and it messed me up 
so bad. And still to this day, if I see her, I get a pit in my stomach and she never actually quit our team. So I have to see her name every single day. But it's like that experience was so incredibly hard for me. That could have been a reason that I decided not to be a coach anymore. Because I'm like, if she thinks that, then everybody must think that. And that is one of the most dangerous thoughts that we can choose to believe by letting the opinion or the words or the voice of one person become the words and the voice and the opinion of everybody. And that is the fastest way to nowhere. So again, I had to choose not to believe that everybody felt about me the way that she did and not operate from that place. And then the girl who got me to two star, which she got to diamond the fastest I'd ever seen anybody get to diamond at that point on our team. And we became a two star team. She's not even a coach on our team anymore. And so I was adding up all these experiences and acting as if they were fact. And so this created stress and doubt around building diamonds. And so it was finally at the end of 2019, where I was annoying myself because these lies that I was believing was not getting me where, where I wanted to go. I was not an elite coach again. I was not running a five-star team. I was not making the income that I felt I deserved for the work that I felt like I was putting in. And something had to change. And so I went into 2020 with no expectations And my word of the year was growth. And it was the most explosive year of my life. Like I'm literally getting goosebumps as I'm talking about it. And it was like, I couldn't even imagined it. Even when I imagined like my rise to the top and obviously I'm still not at the top. It wasn't even as good. My imagination wasn't even as good as it was. It was like the best year of my life until it was not. And like I said, we started April, a one-star team, ended a six-star, became an elite team. I got to speak on the national wake-up call. Two months later, I had five more personally sponsored diamonds pop. One month later, I had two more personally sponsored diamonds pop that put us into nine-star and five-star qual. We finished eight and five. I got to open a third business center. And then I didn't know what to do next. And literally the success I had been dreaming about and praying about and working so hard for, for the last five years, literally paralyzed me. And I almost felt like I had PTSD from it because I did not know what I was supposed to do next. Because every year I had the same goal, five-star elite, five-star elite, five-star elite. And every year I went for it no matter what, no matter if I didn't know how I was going to hit it or who was going to help or who my diamonds were going to be or how the, I was going to get the elite points. I was going for it no matter what. And then I got it five months into 2020 and I didn't know what to do. And then it, the next goal became more about my ego than it did about actually helping my team. Now, of course I have a really genuine heart. I want to help every woman succeed But when I put the goal of superstar out to my team, I was in that headspace of like chasing that external validation because I felt like all year I was shining and I was getting all these shout outs and I was on the national wake up call and I was just flying so high. And then when everyone else slowed down, I felt like I just crashed to the ground. And then the imposter syndrome came in when people stopped rank advancing and less people were hitting success club and all my success starters stopped hitting success club. And then diamonds started dropping. I'm like, I didn't deserve this. This was a fluke. And, and I'm like, I'm an imposter. I, I'm not worthy of any of the success. And then when people would give me compliments, I would find every reason in my head to combat that on why it wasn't true. Like someone would be like, you have so much grit and determination. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm fucking lazy. And I would like talk so negatively to myself. And so then what started happening? Then I was talking so negatively to myself that I didn't want to do my workouts. 
So I started skipping more workouts than workouts I was doing, or I would start a program and I wasn't into it. So then I started another one. So then I was just bouncing around, which, you know, doesn't help you get results. I wasn't tracking my containers. I started gaining weight, which then I didn't want to take pictures of myself because I hated the way they looked. So then I wasn't taking pictures. So then I didn't have much to post and I wasn't taking pictures. So I stopped getting ready every day, which made me feel even worse about myself. And then what do you think happened? My success club number started dropping because why would anyone want to join someone like that? I wasn't showing up my best self. Now <laughs> I'm going to preface this with, um, there's nothing that will ever make me miss success club. Nothing. My house could burn down right this second, I would still lock in success club. So there was nothing that would make me miss it. Now, when I say my numbers started dropping, they were dropping from 50 and 40 down to like 30 and 20, okay? So please, I want that to be a lesson to you as well. Nothing will stop me from building the life of my dreams for my family, zero, nothing. Doesn't matter what's happening or how shitty I feel, I will show up and I will get the job done, okay? So all of these things combined, I'm like, I'm not doing well. Like something has got to change, which is why I started working um, with Christy and then my life coach that I was working with before. I'm like, I need to talk to somebody that's not going to blow a bunch of smoke up my ass and tell me how awesome I am and help me figure out how to not just get back to me, but back to, but better than what I am, better than what I was, right? Because a lot of people will tell you the people that get you to five star are not the same people that are going to get you to 10 or 15. And while I don't want that to be true, I had one of my diamonds who was part of eight star. She canceled her coach account this week. Gone. So I know that the reason why maybe we aren't a superstar team right now is because of how bad my mindset was the last six months of 2020. And so I'm ready to rid that and shed that and just start fresh with a bunch of women who want to build this business. So everything in our life is a result of our thoughts. So as you heard, the negative thoughts that I had spiraled in so many areas. And while a lot of them are related to coaching, that doesn't just stay in my coaching business. That stays in the way I treat my daughter or my husband or the way I show up. That's the way I work out. That's the way I feel my body. That's the things I consume on my phone. It's not just coaching. <laughs> it's going to impact every single part of your life. And I didn't want that anymore. And I was ready to stop whatever I needed to stop to find a better version of me. So my sh first shift that I really had to work on, and this is really hard for me, and I think it's hard for everybody, but um, it's okay that not everyone likes me because some people don't. And I get a lot of haters on social media. I mean, I'm bright and bubbly and I'm out there. I'm bold. I cuss. I say what's on my mind and I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. So a lot of people don't like me. And that was really hard for me. But you know what? There's people I don't like. So it's okay if not everyone likes me because I like me and that's what's important. So I don't want to get the approval of people I don't even like. <laughs> so why do I care if they don't like me? It's okay if people misunderstand me. I got into this mindset of like, well, I can't ask my team to shoot for big goals because we achieved so much in 2020. It would be selfish of me to do that. And so I, then I feel like our two attempts at superstar that failed, it's because I didn't bring the right energy to it because I was worried about people misunderstanding where my heart was coming from and whether or not that goal was genuine. It's okay if people understand me because I know where my heart is coming from and I know that I'm genuine and I want to see women shine. And that's why I want to be a superstar team. And I will be okay if someone thinks something about me. So if someone came up to you and was like, Gail, your hair's purple and you live in Washington, you'd be like, no, I don't, bro. Thanks, right? But so why is it when someone says something negative about us that isn't true, we're so hurt by it? If it's not true for you, then it doesn't matter if they think that. And it's okay if it's true for them because it's not true for you. 
And that is really hard for me. So my first diamond that sent me that email, all of those things she said, they are not true what she said about me. But I still allow myself to be hurt by it because if it's true for her, then everyone else must think that, right? And so one thing that you can do when you are spiraling in these negative thoughts is ask yourself, what am I making this mean? So am I really hurt that I lost that friendship with my first diamond? Or am I making it out to mean that everybody thinks that about me? And that's really why I'm upset. So ask yourself when you feel like you're spiraling, what am I making this mean? She said this about me, what am I making this mean? Or this happened, what am I making this mean? So this is really hard for me, but the reason you're hurt is because the way you feel about the thoughts you're having around the situation, not the situation yourself. So back to my first diamond, the thoughts that I'm having around that situation is everybody feels that way. Everybody sees me that way. Am I that way? Am I selfish? Do I only care about myself? And all of these things that can spiral. So ask yourself, what am I making this mean? Is this fact? No. <laughs> then you get to decide whether or not you believe the things that they said. Because if it's not true for you, then it's okay that they think that. And I know that is very hard, but the faster you can get there, the less time you will spend spiraling in those negative thoughts. Shift number two, ask yourself better questions. Christy says this to me all the time. Uh, our, one of our very first sessions, I told her we're not even gonna hit a leap this year. Like I, it's, it's not possible. My coaches, they don't wanna work. They don't wanna go Emerald. Nobody will sign their spouse. Like I was just spiraling in negative thoughts. And so what was I getting? That's exactly what I was getting from my team because I, again, was perpetuating that situation because I was so hyper-focused on what I didn't want. That's all I was talking about. That's what I was creating. So ask yourself better questions. How can I help my coaches better understand why it's so important to have their spouse signed up? How can I better relate to my coaches how Success Club is the lifeblood of our business? How can I help my coaches understand that they are a part of this greater goal? And I think they would really love to be a part of that. Ask yourself better questions, you'll get better answers because your brain will search to find an answer to whatever you ask it. And if you ask it enough, it will give you an answer. So that's why when you wake up and you miss your alarm and your phone is dead and then you spill your coffee and all of these things start happening, you're like, God, it's such a freaking horrible day. And then everything else happens and you're like, see, what's even the point? It's a horrible day. Well, you just kind of perpetuated that, right? Or you can just say, whew, wow, things are starting off a little shaky today. You know what? I'm going to bring some great energy today and I'm going to make this the best day ever. So two different ways to respond to a situation. It's always your choice. Okay, so some questions you can ask yourself when you feel like you are spiraling is number one, is this thought serving me? Was the thought I'm not going to hit elite serving me? No, because again, no success is ever going to come from that kind of thought process. I will not be operating at my highest self if I don't even believe that I'm capable of hitting the goals that I have set for myself. Number two, do I want to continue to believe this? Do I want to continue to believe that everybody else feels about me the way that that diamond felt about me? No. <laughs> I would be a very sad person if I continued to believe that that's true. Number three, how can I flip this and use this to my advantage? So this is something that Christy taught me. She's like, how can you flip this and use this to your advantage? So I actually got a message today from a coach who waited six months to sign up with me. She hit success starter in April and she messaged me today to tell me she's taking a step back. Now, I don't know if that means she's canceling her coach account or what, but essentially she was telling me she's not working and good luck with your business. So um, I could use that to say, see, I push people too hard and then they quit. Or I can say, what can I learn from this? 
how can I take this situation and use it to my advantage to help my team grow and feel more connected to the community? And then lastly, what is the lesson that I need to learn from this? And it's actually really cool because I see these lessons learning within me because that right there could have sent me spiraling. Like, oh, knew it. If all those negative things I thought, they're totally true. But when she sent me that message, I was, I was shaken for a second. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this as a reason to dive in even deeper with my coaches. I'm going to use this as a reason to make sure that my new coaches really feel connected to me and feel uh, valued and seen and noticed and know that they are so much better on the team than off the team. And those were the real thoughts that I thought. And I was like, look at me, I'm growing. <laughs> and I was very proud of myself and I actually stopped to celebrate, which is also very big for me. All right, so what do we do when negative thoughts creep in? Act as if your thoughts are like a toddler. So the other day, um, my daughter was at school and on Thursdays they go to gym and they all stand on the blue line while the teacher explains the game or whatever they're doing before they go and play. And a couple weeks ago, her teacher told me that Chloe got really scared. She started crying. She wouldn't leave um, Mrs. Rude's side. And they asked her what's wrong. And she said, I'm scared of the blue line. Now to us, we're adults. Like that's so silly, right? But <laughs> to her, it's totally real. And it's totally rational and she's afraid of it for whatever reason. Now, I can be like, that's stupid. It's a blue line. You're not afraid of it, right? But that is not going to help or serve her because then she's not going to feel like she can even trust her own thoughts, right? So when your thoughts come in, I want you to treat them as if how you would treat a toddler when they say something silly like that. Be curious about it. Allow yourself to think, process, and feel it. I can ask her, like, what about the blue line scared you? Like, was it just today that it scared you? And open up a discussion with her. And you can do that same thing with yourself. But you don't have to believe these thoughts that come in. Don't resist them. Don't say, oh, what is wrong with me? Like, why do I think this? Like, I'm such a mess. No, allow them to come in because again, give yourself grace. You're a human. It's just your brain's way of trying to protect you. But you don't need to jump in the pool with these thoughts, okay? It, if it's a thought you've had before, your brain will go to work to find evidence on why it's true, okay? So I've had this thought of I can't help others find success. I can be like, oh, see, Ashley's taking a step back because I didn't get her success fast enough because she's been a coach for six months and, right? So my brain could spiral in this situation, or I can ask myself those questions, learn from it and move forward. And shift three, also learned from Christy, out of ego into purpose. Like my desire more than anything is to help other women shine and become unstuck in their own lives because that's what I needed when I got started, I stayed stuck for a long time in a toxic jab, in a toxic thoughts cycle of wanting to do better, wanting to feel better, and then doing nothing, and then ordering a hot chocolate, a chai tea, a tea of three vanilla scones, and a king size Snicker bar every night before work. Like that's enough sugar for a year. I would eat that every night before work and then wonder why I felt like shit. I had to take a nap every single freaking day of my life, even if I had only been awake for two hours because of the way I treated my body. So my desire more than anything is to make, uh, make sure other women don't feel that way and know that there is better if they just give coaching a chance. Like they can literally change their whole lives. But I also want to build a seven-figure business. I also want to be able to move out of the state of Oregon if I want to and buy a huge home and have a pool. That's very important to me. I also want to take my daughter to every single Disney park in the world. I want to take her to Disneyland Paris for her fifth birthday. I want to do all of these things and I want to do it by being a top coach with Beachbody. So my heart is genuine. My purpose is genuine. I have to leave my ego at the door. 
because ego will get in the way and say, you've tried superstar two times already. It's embarrassing. Don't try again. <laughs> okay. Ego will say, don't message her. You've already messaged her eight times and she's ignored every single message. Ego will say, well, you had success last year, but that was just a fluke. You know, just coast where you're at right now. You're doing good enough. Like no reason to push any harder. Your ego will tell you a lot of things, but it's going to keep you and hold you back from greatness. So I tell my coaches all the time, especially with inviting <laughs> ego at the door, because you never know who's on the other side of that message that you might be sending that's dying to be noticed by you. That's dying for a change in their life. I have a woman on my team who is near and dear to my heart. And she told me verbatim, Danny, if I hadn't seen your post that Monday night, I would be six feet under right now. She has gone through things in her life that no person should ever have to go through and coaching saved her. So if I was in my ego and was like, don't post again, about joining your team, don't put your application again in the comments, like you already did that last night, her life might not be here. And she is such a joy in this world. And I hope that you take every invite you send that seriously because it is that serious. Whether they're having a great freaking life or they're having the worst life, they deserve an invite from you. You don't get to decide who's gonna do this and who doesn't. You offer it to everyone and you let them decide. So my purpose is a loving, affectionate wife, a patient and present mama, and a superstar with joy. Because when I get to the top of this company, I wanna do it with women hand in hand with me because we rise together. And I wanna know that my family is proud of me and that they weren't out there and I was in here and that I did it without them. I want us all to do this together. When I walk across the stage as a superstar, my husband and my daughter will be in the audience. And my daughter will get to see what it looks like to have a mom who didn't give up on her dreams. And that is the most important thing to me in the world. Do you have any questions? Mic drop. <laughs> and so good. Loved this. Yes. So many like needed to hear this. Amazing. Yes. 100%. 100%. Do you guys have any questions? Post them in the chat. Any questions? Anything for Danny, guys? She's built an incredible business. Sitting here stunned. I needed to hear this. I needed to hear this. I need to hear this. Thank you so much. Um, make sure that you take a picture, post on your stories, tag Danny, thank her, show her all the love for pouring into us tonight. Her daughter is sick and she still showed up. And thank you for this, because a lot of what was said is how I feel. And as type threes, we do not like emotions. Um, we don't like to be vulnerable because it, in our head, makes us look weak. But fun fact, type threes on the Enneagram are the most capable of feeling emotions. Like they have the biggest capacity to love. Um, so that's a fun fact for you guys. I learned that through my Enneagram coach. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that, Danny, because in my, I forget what year it was that I just I all of a sudden started sharing about my depression and all these things that I felt so much shame around that I was afraid to share them. And that's when people started noticing me on social media. They started connecting with me and it was that vulnerability. And before it was just like, I show up, I do the work, I'm happy all the time. Never sharing those other, those other weaknesses, right? Because there was so much shame around it. But by sharing it, not only was able to connect and help more people, but it also let that shame go. 
Right. Like I'm imperfect and that's okay. Shine um, light on your gremlins, as Brene Brown would say. Uh, Sarah asked, do you transition challengers to coaches or do you invite straight to coaching? Uh, I am not one of those where I say, oh, your challengers are your best coaches. But no, that's just not, <laughs> that's just never been, what does this never been my business? Um, so, um, if you don't follow me, I pretty much only talk about coaching. Like I, I, I post and I talk about everything through the lens of a coach versus a girl on a fitness journey. And I think this is where a lot of coaches struggle is it's really easy for them to post about fitness. And then they're frustrated that they can't sell a challenge pack because people only want workouts from them, but that's all that people see from you. So whatever you talk about is what people want from you. So I post everything I do, workouts, supplements, nutrition, uh, work, all of that through the lens of a coach, because I'm doing all that because I'm a coach. I'm doing all that because it's my job. So I wouldn't just be working out if I wasn't essentially being paid for it, right? Like the, I, I was an athlete my whole life, but I was never into like working out. I was into sports and being active in that way, but was never into the gym or doing anything like that. So um, now that this is my job, that's the way that I talk about it. And I talk about coaches get the best results. And I make sure every single day to share my supplements so that I don't get pushed back on those things. I want people to know that those supplements are the reason why I have the results that I have. It's not just the workouts. Um, and so, and then to take it a step further, I'm doing all that because I'm a coach. So I want you to know that if you want the results that I have, whether or not you want to make any money from this, you need to be a coach. So coaches have more skin in the game. Coaches get the best results. Coaches are less likely to quit. Coaches are more likely to stay on product, which means better results. Uh, plus we have this whole fun team that you get to be a part of community. We read books, we have team calls. You can do all of that, right? So that's how I present it. And I talk about it relentlessly because that's what I want people to be interested in. I'm still showing all the stuff that a customer gets. And I do sign up a lot of customers but I also sign up a lot of coaches because I talk about it all the time. So when people are like, oh, I, I'm just so scared. or I don't know what to say. And it's like, everything you're doing is because you're a coach. So it's like, I didn't turn my workout off today because it's my job to show up. I got through my entire hour workout today because the ladies in my accountability group are counting on me. I woke up at 5 a.m. today to get this workout done because my team shows up at 5 a.m. and I don't want to disappoint them. All of those things are fitness, but it's because you're a coach. So it's just the way that you present it. It's the language that you use and just being 100% confident that coaching is your best offer. So that's how you have to present it. And then more people will at least be interested in hearing about it. Whether or not they say yes to coaching, they can still be a customer, right? It's not like once they hear coaching, oh, well, they can't be a customer. No, you can always default to a customer and upgrade to a coach later. That's totally fine. But I want to give everybody the best offer I have, which is the team. Love it. And so Gail asks, what do you send to your coaches about your goals for elite? Do you ask about their goals? And if they match yours, you ask them to run with you? So I... Um, I didn't do this last year because I just, I had so many 2019 and 2020 coaches who were just doing all the things. But uh, again, I did struggle so much at the end of the year, my recruiting became very small. And so I didn't feel like I had really a huge pool of people to work with um, at the beginning of the year. So I put all of my 2020 and then as new 2021 coaches come in, I have all of them in a thread. And I try to pop into that thread every single day and they all know elites the goal. And I think they all somewhat understand how they play a part in it. Seems like no matter how many times I explain it, people still don't understand, but it is always just me. What is your goal for the month? How can I help you? What do you need right now? If they're like, I need a graphic. I put the graphic in there. If they're like, I need post prompts. I'm like, boom, here's 40 of them, right? If they're like, oh, I, I don't know uh, what to say to this person. I'm like, send me a screenshot. Like I'm in there 
to help them with whatever they want and encouraging them to get to their goals. Um, and I like that group setting because they're all kind of in that same place because they're all newer coaches. So, um, you know, if Rachel signs a coach, then I'm like, Rachel signed a coach. And everyone's like, good job, Rachel. Right. So it's fun to celebrate in there. And it's kind of nice because it's just like intimate, just us. Right. So it's not just the whole team. Um, so that's kind of, but, you know, I am very frank with them too. Like if we have X amount of coaches at success club, we'll finish this category for elite. Like they, they know it's the goal and they know that they're a part of it. And I told that from the very beginning, when I created the thread on January 1st, I'm like, if you are not interested in working the business, you are free to leave the thread. This is going to be an active working, not just fly on the wall kind of thing. So um, it actually took a little bit. Like I, again, my first call with Christy, I'm like, we're not even going to hit elite and now we're already premier. So obviously I have an attitude problem, but, um, so it took a little bit to, to get it rolling. And, um, I know we're short on time, but I do believe besides consistency, that is my superpower is I'm just the coach who's willing to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again until it catches fire. So, I could have given up on that thread because it was literally me just talking to myself for three months. You know, people would like, like my messages, which I freaking hate. Um, and you know, I'm like, finally, I'm like, I would love to like not talk to myself. And so finally, you know, they'll, they'll say something, but, um, I just try to support them in any way that I can, because I know the only way for me to hit my goals is to help other people find success. Um, just to add, just something that Danny does a really great job of is sharing her vision of where she does want to go. So, you know, in that thread, she's helping them with their goals, but she does do live videos. She's like, I want to, I want to get to superstar. I, I want us to be a superstar team. I want us to be an elite team. So she does share that vision. And that's something that I realize is a lot of times we, we think that other people might take that negatively that, oh, it's all about me kind of thing, but it actually, that commitment that you have inspires most people. It inspires most people. And I really got to feel that when I was in Hawaii last week, um, Holly was sharing, she's like, yeah, Lindsay Matway is our top income earner in all of Beachbody and she's not working the business anymore. And she earns like three and a half million a year. And Holly was like, I want to be a top earner because most people stop building like 10 years into this. So I can be that. And when she said that, I was like, damn right. I can be that too, because I'm super consistent. I am not near three and a half million or a top earner. I mean, I'm a top earner, but not the top earner, but I can get there. And so that commitment of your vision of where you're going, of the goal you have by sharing that it really inspires people. And when you shrink, you're, you're, you're like, I've done that. I've done that. And when I shrink, everyone else around me shrinks. Like you are the leader, bring that energy and that vision that you have of where you want to go and you will inspire the right people to do it with you. So Cass has a couple of questions. How many invites do you send for coaching a week? What's your tracking system and where do you find new coaches? I would say uh, right now I'm actually getting most people from Facebook, but I just did a huge invite challenge over on Facebook with my team last month. Um, I actually didn't invite at all on Instagram last month because I was so focused on this invite challenge that my team and I did. Um, I still definitely get people from Instagram because I do polls and, you know, swipe up and all that stuff. But um, I never like to put out a, a number of invites that people should send per day because it's going to look different for everyone. I think bare minimum needs to be 10 uh, a day, no matter what, uh, or, you know, a hundred a week or, or however you want to break that down. But I, you know, I think if you're doing less than 10, you're going to find yourself frustrated with the results that you're not getting. But one, one piece of advice I want to offer you is don't base your results on how many invites you've sent. I want you to base it on how many people you actually gave information to. Because if you base it on how many people you send invites to, like for our invite challenge, we were doing a thousand invite challenge. I got to 640 and I would need to look, but the amount of people that I actually gave information back to was very small. 
So I could be like, well, that was a total waste of time. That wasn't successful. I sent all these invites and all these people ignored me. But how many of you have ever walked into a store and walked out? Do you think that a retailer quit, quit their job because you walked in and walked out? No, probably not. They probably waited till their shift was done and went home and then came back the next day. So don't worry about the just looking as we used to call them when I worked at coach, the JLs, the just looking, okay? Worry about people you actually talk to, people you actually tell about what you do as a coach, people who actually show up to a coach sneak peek, people who actually get packages, prices, right? That's, that's what you should be basing your success off of. Like people you actually talk to, how many of you, how many are you closing? Not how many people you're inviting, right? I mean, how many store emails do you get a day? Does, is Carbon 38 going to close down tomorrow because I didn't respond to their six emails they sent me today? No, they're going to send me six more tomorrow, right? Like we cannot, you have to take the emotion out of it and then stop finding all the negative reasons on, on the work you're doing and just keep going because there are people who need this. There are people who are going to say yes. Just know you're going to get ignored a lot. It's not personal. It has nothing to do with you. Take the emotion out of it. Um, but I do think 10 a day minimum, depending on your goal. But I just always tell my coaches, just invite until you hit your goal. Now, obviously, you keep inviting after that, too, because you want to build your funnel. But again, people are like, okay, well, how many would I have to send to get to Diamond? And it's like, well, you might have to send 500. She might have to send 5,000. Like, it's just going to depend. It's, it's not going to be the same for everyone. So good. <laughs> Like this one needs to be sent to every new coach, <laughs> um, maybe like a month in. So they're like, well, huh? <laughs> but this is so incredible, Danny. It was everything. I, I basically just told her when she said leadership mindset, I'm like, my team needs that. Everything you say will be gold nuggets for them. Um, so I can already tell that it's been super helpful for all of you just by the messages that I'm getting. Again, take a little screenshot, post in your stories, tag Danny, but also when you post in your stories, say why, like get face to camera and say, oh my goodness, you guys, you don't understand. Like when I started this business, X, Y, Z, what was that for you? I was scared that maybe I couldn't do this, but knowing that we have training, we have support. There's no reason I can't be successful if I'm not leading into this team. And it's just trainings like tonight that bring me so much energy to rock the goals that I have for my family, insert what those goals are, bring people on that journey with you. When I said I wanted to leave my full-time job, I had zero coaches on my team. My very first call, I said to her, I was like, yeah, I have, she's like, how much money have you made? I'm like, well, nothing, but I'm going to, I just started, but I'm going to leave my full-time job. And she's like, okay, let's do this. It's like literally the confidence that you have. So share that you don't have to have any success at this point in your journey whatsoever to go out there and share people with people where you are going and that this opportunity, the gift that it is, that it allows you the option to make that happen. Um, so use this training as a perfect reason to go shout Danny out and thank her showing gratitude. Like gratitude is huge. You will not get more if you're not thankful for what you already have. Show that gratitude. Show what this team gives you. Share your vision and where you're going with this. And then after you go face to camera, do a little boomerang of us actually being on this Zoom, post a coach opportunity. Like I'm looking for three more people who want to run with me and earn extra income for their family. I'm looking for three more women who want to take their kids to Disney and do it with a second side hustle or a, a side hustle. I'm looking for whatever that is for you. I'm looking for people who want to leave their full-time jobs and have complete freedom. Post that, say, are you interested? Are you open to learning more? Yes or yes, please. That is your call to action from tonight. I will get the recording up. Thank you so much, Danny. This has been like my favorite training all year long. Um, I hope you guys all have a good night. And remember tomorrow, there is a new coach training going through getting started right. Uh, it's in the events events tab and ignite your life. You can find all the details there. You guys are amazing. You are enough. You can do this. You can do everything that Danny has done and created in her business. She is proof of that. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys.